Los Angeles Lakers season preview. Let's do the offseason review as always first. So the Lakers made a ton of moves this offseason, LeBron James being the biggest one, and they also re-signed Michael Beasley, JaVale McGee, KCP, Rajon Rondo, and Lance Stevenson to one-year deals. In the draft, they got Mo Wagner with the 25th overall pick, Isaac Bongo with the 39th overall pick, and with the 47th overall pick, they drafted Svi Mikhailuk. They also lost in free agency Tyler Ennis, Channing Fry, Brook Lopez, Julius Randle, and Isaiah Thomas. So let's start with the draft picks. Mo Wagner, played three years at Michigan, pretty good score, pretty bad defender. If he's quick enough on defense at the NBA level, he makes for a very interesting stretch five in the league. Isaac Bonga played in Germany. To be honest, I haven't seen anything from him that tells me he'll survive in the NBA. Svi Mikhailuk is, for many Lakers fans, actually the most intriguing rookie, even though he was picked the latest. Coming out of college, everyone knew that he could shoot, but doubted that he could do anything other than that. He's actually more athletic than you might think. If you read up his numbers during the draft combine, you'd be surprised to know that he has a 37 inch max vertical, which is more than some of his teammates like Josh Hart and KCP. We'll talk more about this later in the video, but because the Lakers don't have a lot of three point shooting on this team, if Mikhailuk doesn't completely bomb defensively, he could actually get a lot of playing time. Let's move on to free agency. Signing LeBron James is a very overrated move. LeBron isn't even that good when you look at the advanced stats. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Calm down. I really like the JaVale McGee signing. I feel like at this point, McGee is actually a little bit underrated because he's been a meme his entire career and many people don't take him seriously. Even though last year with the Warriors, he really, really showed that he can play well within a system. The Lance Stevenson signing, I'm okay with. The Beasley signing, I'm also okay with. The KCP signing, I'm okay with only because the Lakers had no choice since KCP is with Clutch Sports and there was probably some under the table agreements when LeBron came to LA. The Rondo signing is the one I'm really not okay with. Chances are he's only staying in LA for one year, so long term, it's not a huge deal. But just for this next season, I still don't understand why Rondo was a better option than some of the other point guards on the market. Overall, I'm giving the Lakers an offseason grade of an A-. The LeBron signing obviously carries their offseason a lot, and even though the other signings weren't great, they were all one-year contracts, which feed right into LA's master plan. I'm of course talking about their master plan with regards to the 2019 NBA offseason. In addition to the $30 million worth of one-year deals that will expire next summer, the Lakers, after buying out Lil Deng and stretching his contract, will have somewhere around $38 million in cap space next year, which is right around the max salary number. And 2019 is also a much juicier market than this past summer in terms of star free agents. KD, Kyrie, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, Klay Thompson, Kemba Walker, Al Horford. Even without LeBron, the LA Lakers already have an advantage in free agency. With LeBron, there's almost no way they don't end up with at least one of those guys. Here's their projected roster. The first thing that jumps out to me about this roster is that it has a lot of great transition players. LeBron is obviously one of the best transition players in NBA history, but even outside of that, Lonzo and Rondo both do very well in the open court. The young guys like Josh Hart and Kuzma and Ingram are going to run a lot. JaVale McGee is also pretty fast for a guy his size, so I expect the Lakers to be a very good transition team. What also jumps out is the lack of shooting on the team, and this is really, I think, the biggest negative if you can find one. Kuzma, KCP, Josh Hart, and the rookie Mikhailuk are all pretty good shooters. Brandon Ingram and Michael Beasley shoot decent percentages, but they both barely take any threes. Rondo and Stevenson and Lonzo are terrible percentage-wise, and LeBron shouldn't really be spotting up for threes when he's on the court. The Lakers were already the second worst three-point shooting team in the league last year at 34.5%, and while players that play with LeBron will inevitably get better spot-up looks, the addition of Rondo and Stevenson might keep that percentage pretty low. Now, despite being a sub-500 team last year, the Lakers were actually 12th in defensive rating. This year, they have a chance to crack the top 10, with JaVale McGee replacing Brooke Lopez, which I think is a defensive plus and Rondo and Lance being added to the team, both of whom when they try can be very good defenders. Moving away from strictly basketball stuff for a minute, this team is one of the weirdest personality compositions I've ever seen. You have Rondo, who is just weird and is notorious for feuding with coaches. Lonzo Ball, who's actually managed to stay out of the news this summer after people stopped giving his dad unnecessary attention. LeBron, who's one of the most famous people on the planet, but also an absolute diva. Uh, Zubax, who's probably gonna get yelled at by all his teammates because he's too nice of a person 
person, Lance Stevenson, who's just a maniac, JaVale McGee, who's the most memed player since internet memes were born, Josh Hart, who plays more Fortnite than basketball, Michael Beasley, who read some stupid article online and now thinks that human beings are all like that chick in Lucy, and in general talks like he's high all the time, Brandon Ingram, who looks like he's high all the time. On top of all of this, they're living in LA, playing for one of the most famous sports franchises in the world. I mean, good lord. This is like the perfect setup for a sitcom. If they did a reality TV show about this team off the court, I would watch every single second of it. Anyways, uh, Vegas Projections has LA winning 48 games. Honestly, this depends on how hard LeBron tries this season. He's not stupid. He knows this team right now is not ready to compete with the Warriors. He's had the conversation with Magic Johnson where they talk about how they're aiming for 2019. We also know that there's going to be quite a lot of adjustment pains for this team early on, just like there was in LeBron's first year in Miami and in his first year back in Cleveland. If I had the option, I would go for the push and say that the Lakers win exactly 48 games because that seems pretty reasonable. But since I'd have to choose over or under, I'm going with the over by a slight margin. All right, so that's it for the Lakers season preview. I'm personally gonna be paying attention to Lonzo Ball, I think, out of all these players. I'm interested to see how Lonzo Ball interacts with LeBron. I, I think it could potentially be a good fit. It could also potentially be a disastrous fit. But anyway, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to stay tuned for, I think we have, what, 15, 15 to 20 NBA season previews left. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.